Canada's participation in World War I played a defining role in our coming of age as a nation. In 1914, at the outbreak of World War I, Canada as a country was only 47 years old. We were a country of nearly 7 million people with a small standing army of approximately 3,000 men. However, as the war began, the Canadian Expeditionary Force was formed and within months would include a membership of over 32,000 men heading overseas. The flag shown here is one of the more familiar battle colors used by the Canadian Expeditionary Force. In order to build a new army, the call was raised across Canada. As a member of the British Commonwealth, it was expected that Canada would provide military support to Britain and the Allies. There was no conscription or military draft until following the war. Most of the Canadian military force was a volunteer force. The war office recruited able-bodied men from all over Canada, including French Canadians, Irish Canadians, Scottish Canadians, and Canadians of English descent. The training period for these new soldiers was relatively short, with most of that training taking place at Valcartier Military Base north of Quebec City. The men were trained quickly and deployed immediately. At the time, the convoy of Canadian troops was the largest convoy ever to cross the Atlantic Ocean. Although Canadians fought in South Africa's Boer War at the turn of the century, it was not until the outbreak of World War I in 1914 that Canada was called upon to put a large modern army into combat overseas. During these war years, many of Canada's finest regiments came into being. Some were raised and equipped with private funds. They learned how to soldier and they went to France, to the tragedy and victory of a great and terrible war. Montsorel, the Somme, Amiens, Festubert, Ypres, Vimy Ridge. When the Germans launched a gas attack at Ypres in April 1915, the Canadian 1st Division took the brunt of it. But more than once across the vast and bloody front, Canadian soldiers paid the Germans back. In 1918, the Canadian army emerged from the mud of the French battlefields. The Black Watch of Canada alone was awarded 23 separate battle honors and the Queen's own rifles, 21. The Germans had been beaten and Canada shared the sweet taste of victory. Four years of struggle in a crucible of fire. The Canadian army left 60,000 men behind when it returned from France. Today, a simple monument in Ottawa pays silent tribute to their memory and to the spirit they personify. 68 Canadian soldiers were awarded the Commonwealth's highest decoration, the Victoria Cross, upon which is inscribed with simple eloquence, for valor. Throughout World War I, the Canadian Corps gained valuable experiences in many important battles, including the Battle of Ypres and the Battle of the Somme. However, it was the Battle of Vimy Ridge that would help to define Canada as a nation. Under the command of Lieutenant General Julian Bing, the attack on Vimy Ridge would see the four divisions of the Canadian Corps fight side by side as one unit for the first time. In the early hours of April 9, 1917, every piece of Canadian artillery began to fire as a well-orchestrated attack took place to remove the German army from Vimy Ridge. The battle raged for three days, with Canadian troops taking complete control of the ridge and the high ground by nightfall of April 12th. Back in Canada, the story of the attack and victory spread quickly and caused an increase in patriotism and national pride that remains to this day. But I think it's really important to emphasize the importance of the Battle of Vimy Ridge in, nation, in Canada becoming a nation. And as you heard, Vimy Ridge was a key position in northern France, as it was a linchpin in the Germans' Hindenburg Line along the Western Front, from Flanders to the English Channel. If Vimy fell, it would expose the German territory behind the ridge to the Allies. As important as it was for the Allies to get the ridge, it was even more important for the Germans not to lose it. And as you've also heard now, the, ridge, the, the Battle of Vimy Ridge, which began at 5.30 a.m. on Easter Monday, April 9th, 1917, a day like today, was the first time that all four Canadian divisions had fought together on the same field. The day dawned, cold and snowy, the men had been waiting up all night to begin their Vimy Glide, a tightly choreographed artillery assault up the ridge. 
By 6.15, a mere 45 minutes later, the Canadians had made it through the first line of trenches. By mid-afternoon, they had taken command of the crest of the ridge. The Canadians had accomplished in one day what the British and French had not been able to do in two and a half years. Why did the Canadians succeed where the British and French had failed in taking this ridge? The Canadian Corps was an undeniably an outstanding fighting force, and there were many factors which contributed to its effectiveness, as we also have just heard. Canada's army was made of largely sturdy young men from what was a primarily rural society. Many of the soldiers from the frontline troops up to the senior commanders demonstrated a willingness to innovate and experiment with new equipment and tactics which involved thorough preparation and lower rank participation. The soldiers left a legacy even larger than the victory. They left a legacy of Canadian qualities that permeate our democratic and open society to this day. From the victory, the world started to take notice. For example, even before this battle, a captured German headquarters document read, the Canadians are known to be good troops and are therefore well suited for assault. There are no deserters to be found amongst the Canadians. And afterwards, one historian was moved to remark that the Battle of Emmy Ridge was perhaps the most brilliant success of the war on the British front. But this victory came at a price. 3,598 soldiers lost their lives out of more than 10,000 casualties. The price was high, but the significance of this victory in Canada's march towards nationhood was clear. The Canadians were brave and strong and were earning their independence. Corporal Roy L. Stevens, 26th New Brunswick Regiment, who was writing to his mother on June 7, 1917 after she inquired about two neighbors who were killed at Vimy, said, Dear Mother, you asked me in a letter of April 27th if I had seen Lee Crandallmeyer or Herb Bradley before they were killed. Yes, I was talking to them about a week before, and I tried to make them see the best side of it, which I think they did, for every new fellow seems to think that the war will soon end when they get there. If you ever see or talk with any of their people, just tell them that was the best place for them to give up their lives. Also, that it was in one of the most important battles of the war, where the Canadians upheld their great name, which would make any troop look up to them, with Buzz Love Roy. But now, 95 years later, with the last surviving World War I Canadian soldier gone, who will remember the sacrifices that day that started Canada on the road to nationhood? Certainly the families of these soldiers have their memories and keep them safely guarded in their homes. But strong societies are built on the collective memories of their past. Telling these stories as a nation is the greatest honor we can bestow on these soldiers and their descendants. To do this, we must reach out to our youth. They have the strength in their arms to carry the torch which they have been passed, the impressionable minds to learn of the importance of these stories, and they have the open hearts to keep these memories true. As generations pass, we must never forget how Canada became a nation and take to heart the pledge, we will never, remember, we will, we will never forget them. Following the horror, sacrifice, and courage displayed during the Battle of Vimy Ridge, Four Canadians were awarded the Victoria Cross, the highest military decoration offered to British and Commonwealth forces. Of the four Victoria Crosses awarded, three of them were earned on the opening day of the battle. Private William Johnston Milne was 24 years old as the Battle of Vimy Ridge began. Milne crawled on his hands and knees to capture and secure an enemy machine gun that was firing on his fellow troops. He did this twice before dying on the battlefield. His body was never recovered. He is commemorated on the Vimy Memorial in France. Sergeant Sifton's company was stalled by an enemy machine gun. Once he located the gun, Sifton charged and secured the gun, single-handedly killing the entire enemy crew. This act of bravery cost Sifton his life, but his sacrifice allowed Canadian troops the opportunity to advance further. Private John Pattison jumped from one shell hole to another, hurling bombs at an enemy machine gun nest. Once close enough, Pattison jumped into the nest and secured the gun. Pattison survived the Battle of Vimy Ridge, but died a month or so later in a battle near Mons, France. Captain Thane McDowell reached his position ahead of his company and secured an enemy machine gun nest. He witnessed an enemy soldier entering into a tunnel and followed the soldier. McDowell was able to bluff the Germans into believing that there was a large Allied contingent awaiting them, convincing them to surrender. McDowell was the only Victoria Cross recipient to survive the war. 
He died in 1960 in Oakville, Ontario. The April 9th attack on Vimy Ridge was not the first time the Allied forces had attempted to take this high ground from the Germans. The fact, though, that it was a Canadian Corps that succeeded caused great celebration, pride, and patriotism. There was tremendous celebration for those that survived, as well as a recognition of the supreme sacrifice that many had given. The government of France has granted Canada perpetual use of 250 acres of land at the top of the Vimy Ridge site to serve as a memorial to the battle. The area surrounding the memorial is covered with trenches, tunnels, and paths from the Battle of Vimy Ridge. The horrible images of World War I are not to be forgotten and have been captured in the famous poem Flanders Fields by Canadian Lieutenant Colonel John McCray. This beautiful poem commands us to take time to remember those that have paid the supreme sacrifice. In Flanders fields the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place, and in the sky, the lark still bravely singing, fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If he break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. As we approach Remembrance Day this November 11th, Let's take time to remember the sacrifice of those brave Canadians that volunteered to serve the Commonwealth and our country in the fight for freedom in World War I battles such as the Battle of Vimy Ridge.